Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's filtered webinar. It's Make the Most of Pivot Tables. Um, today, joining me um, is filtered IT trainer Deb Ashby. She'll be taking you through everything you need to know about pivot tables, helping you to increase proficiency and productivity in this widely used Excel function. Before I pass over the controls to Deb, just a few little bits from me. Firstly, if you're new to filtered, we're an online training provider specializing in the use of adaptive technologies to personalize content accelerating learning and reducing training time. Check out filter.com to see our range of courses which can train your staff in key business and software skills and our other solutions including creating bespoke training content for your company. Uh, follow us on Twitter with hashtag filtered webinar to get updates feedback about webinars or send us any questions you have. If you have any questions for Deb during the webinar, uh, please do submit them via the question pane. We'll be taking a short break at the halfway point to answer them and then again at the end of the session. Um, depending on how many we do receive, we may not be able to go through them all, so if we don't manage to field your question, do drop us an email at info at webinars team um, after the webinar and we'll obviously get back to you with our answers. So um, that's pretty much everything from me. So it gives me great pleasure to hand you over to Deb to start today's webinar. Over to you, Deb. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining today um, on our webinar on pivot tables in Excel. Um, as Alan mentioned, my name is Deborah Ashby, I am the IT trainer for Filtered, so my role here is basically I'm a Microsoft subject matter expert, so I look after all of our Microsoft training courses, I uh, write new training courses uh, for our website and I also run webinars such as this one for all of you lovely people. So um, that's me um, and what we're going to be going through today is we're going to be uh, focusing on pivot tables in Excel. Now this is a really broad subject. Um, I could probably talk for about three or four hours on pivot tables. Alas, we don't have that long so I'm going to try and keep it to roughly uh, 30 to 40 minutes. What I've tried to do is just pick out um, the main features is the main points, uh, key things when it comes to pivot tables. This session is kind of pitched at a, a basic level, so um, if you've never created a pivot table before, then um, this session is going to be really good for you. Even if you have and you want to know a little bit more of some of the other things that you can do with pivot tables, then you'll probably get quite a lot out of this session as well. Now I do have a basic agenda just to show to you. It looks like there's a lot on there. These are all fairly short um, exercises and the way that I'm going to do this is there's just a couple of PowerPoint slides at the beginning and then we're going to jump straight into some demo files that I've got set up and we're going to go through the agenda that way. So these are all fairly short um, modules. So I'm just going to talk to you a little bit first of all about um, what exactly pivot tables are and how they're used. We're then going to take a look at some raw data, so just some data that you have in Excel and how you actually prepare that data in order to start creating your pivot tables. We'll then go in and we'll actually create a pivot table so you can see how that's done. It's very simple and we'll take a look at how you can pivot that pivot table, which basically just means moving fields around, um, configuring pivot tables and also how you can use external data sources. So um, your data that you want to use in your pivot table might not necessarily always be in Excel, so how you would import that data in. We're going to take a look at how you manage your pivot table data, summarize your data and group pivot table fields as well. Um, how you can utilize pivot table data in formulas and also how you can sort your pivot table data. We're going to do some filtering um, using slices which may or may not be something that you've come across before and I'm going to show you just a few basic things about how to make your pivot tables look a little bit more visual so such as applying formatting and conditional formatting to your pivot tables and then just to finish off at the end I'm going to very briefly show you how to create a pivot chart which kind of runs side by side with pivot tables. Once you know how to create a pivot table you pretty much know how to create a pivot chart but I just wanted to, to add that in at the end as well. So that's our basic agenda that we're going to run through. As I said, this is going to be a series of, of live demos and exercises. Now, I was just saying I've been waiting a, a long time to be able to use this slide. Um, <laughs> this kind of um, illustrates the topic today. So Pivot, I don't know if any of you are, are Friends fans. This is probably one of my favorite episodes ever where Ross and Rachel are trying to move a couch up some stairs and are constantly screaming the word pivot. So I thought that might be quite interesting just to have up on the screen whilst I talk to you a little bit about why we use pivot tables or what pivot tables are. 
Now, the way that you need to look at pivot tables is, um, if you think of ju just a regular table of data, it's a fairly static uh, data list. Now, with pivot tables, once you convert your table into a pivot table, it makes that data dynamic, which means you have a lot more control over it. So you can move things around, um, move fields around, move columns around very, very simply in order to extract the data that you need. Now, not everybody necessarily has a use for pivot tables. So if in your job role you do things in Excel such as just some basic calculations, maybe you do some formatting, things like that, you may not ever have a use for pivot tables and that is okay. You know, don't feel like you have to use them. However, if your job role means that you do a lot of data analysis or you summarize large data sets, then you're probably going to find that pivot tables are a godsend. They do tend to divide a room. Some people love them, some people hate them. One thing to say about pivot tables is people think they are a lot more complicated than they actually are, and you'll see that as we go through. Very, very simple to create, and once you understand them, very, very simple to use and a really powerful tool in Excel. So, as I said, my main aim in this session is just to give you that kind of foundation knowledge so that if you then want to um, go through and learn more about pivot tables, you can do that. All right, without further ado, let's get into uh, some of our exercises. So I am going to be switching around between a few different exercises that I've got set up. So let's just open our first exercise file. Okay, now before I actually, I am going to take you through how to create a pivot table from scratch, but before I did that, I actually just wanted to show you one that was complete. So you can kind of see what we're working towards and what a pivot table looks like. Um, it may be your first time ever seeing a pivot table or using one, or you might be already fairly familiar with pivot tables. So this is a pivot table, um, and I've got two sheets here. So I'm currently clicked on sheet four, which is displaying my pivot table. If I just jump across to sheet one, you can see here, this is the data that's currently being used in the pivot table. So I have a column um, which shows different departments. I have a column that shows quarters, so one, two, three, or four. And then I have some sales figures for each department. So this was essentially my raw data list, which I have then gone in and I've created a pivot table based on that data. And hopefully you can see that in this pivot table. We have our um, uh, areas down here, sorry, our departments. We have our um, quarters, so one, two, three, and four. And then we have our figures in the middle there, our sales figures. When I click in that pivot table, what you'll see, if you glance your eyes over to the right-hand side, you'll see we get this pane pop up. So it says pivot tables field. And in the top half of that pane, you'll see it says department, quarter, and sales. And all three of those are currently ticked. And that basically means that they're currently active in the pivot table. These are basically just the headings from our original raw data. So the pivot table will pick those up and it will pull them into this pane over here. And then the way that a pivot table works is you can drag and drop them to these areas down below in order to display your data in various different ways. And depending which one of these four areas you drag that field to, um, that kind of controls how your data is displayed. So I have quarter listed in columns. So if I look back at my pivot table, you can see I have one, two, three, and four. They're in the columns. My department is listed in the rows, and you can see that, balance, dance, play, sport, and work. And then I have my sales figures uh, in the values, which is the main kind of body of the table. So that's kind of how a pivot table is structured. And if I wanted to, I could very simply move these fields around to change the way this data looks. So it's a dynamic way of viewing your data in different ways. So I could drag quarter over to the rows field and drop it underneath department. And you'll see immediately it changes the way that that data in the pivot table is displaying. So now I basically have my quarters running vertically and then I have my sales just there. And I've got, in row labels, I can choose to select or deselect uh, the different departments if I want to. So lots of different ways that you can use this. And it really does depend what kind of information you're trying to extract as to where you drag those fields to. And that is probably the most difficult part of pivot tables, is trying to decide what you want to extract and how you manipulate these fields in order to, to get that in your pivot table. So those are things just to consider. Pivot tables can sometimes be a fair amount of trial and error, dragging and dropping and seeing how that is displaying. 
One field I haven't mentioned down here is this filters area. You can drag things up to filter. So if I drag, for example, department up to filter, what that will do is it just puts this little filter drop down at the top so I can then control my pivot table. So if I just want to see data for a particular department, I could go in and select dance and click OK. And now I'm seeing those sales figures for each quarter for the dance department. Okay, so that's just a finished pivot table which I wanted to show you first of all so you kind of have an idea as to what we're working towards as we start to create our pivot table. Lovely. Let's close that down. As I said, I am going to be switching around uh, different exercise sheets today. And we're just going to switch across to our format data. Now, before we go in to create our pivot table, it's really important that you do essentially an integrity check on the data that you're going to be using in your pivot table. So again, let's look at the data that we've got on the screen. It's that same data. So I have a column for department, a column for quarter, and a column for sales figures in there. Now, when you're creating a pivot table, you want to take a look at your data and you want to make sure that it doesn't contain things like blank rows, blank cells, that you don't have any extraneous data around the outside, that's all going to throw your pivot table off. So you really want to make sure there's no gaps in your data, no blank rows, anything along those lines. So this style of data works really well in a pivot table. Anything that's in a kind of list will work well. Um, if you have maybe a database file stored somewhere, you know, that's always usually in some kind of list format. So anything like that will work really well in a pivot table. But just have a quick look through your data before you create a pivot table just to make sure that everything looks fine. Now one thing I will always do as well before I create my pivot table is I will format my data as a table. So just as a regular table first of all. Now there's a couple of reasons why you might want to do that. Now looking at our data here, I know it kind of looks like it's in a table but it's, it's actually not. It just looks that way because we're using Excel and Excel kind of has that grid slash table look about it. But our data isn't essentially in a table, it's just in lists at the moment. So I'm going to, first of all, and I would advise that you do do this, it is recommended that you take your data and you format it as a table first of all. And we would do that by going up to the home ribbon, casting our eyes across to the styles group, and you'll see you have a format as table option in there. And then you have various different formats that you can apply. Honestly, it doesn't really matter which color, which style you apply, as long as it's in a table. So any one of these, then that's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to choose something like that. Excel will say to you, where is the data? So it's actually found my data. You can see the little, what we call marching ants around the outside. So I'm just going to say yes, and I'm going to make sure that I've got my table has headers ticked and click OK. So my data is now in a table format, and one of the reasons why that is really good, I and mean, we can do things with tables like name the table, which sometimes makes it a lot easier to reference, and you'll see us talk a little bit more about that later in the session, but it also means that if you have to add data to your data list and you want that to update in the pivot table, if you've got it formatted as a table, it makes it a lot easier to do. So if I was to click in this last cell and I wanted to add another row of data in there, if I just press my tab key, it will automatically add that into the bottom of the table and I can go in and add whatever it is I need to add in there. Okay, so we'd always recommend, I'm just going to control Z to come out of that, always recommend that you format your data as a table first and check to make sure that there's no blank rows, spaces, gaps, so on and so forth. Okay, so now we've got our data, we can now go about creating our pivot table. Now, to do that, very simple, you've got your data, just click anywhere in your data, and then you're going to go up to the insert ribbon, and you'll see the first group here is called tables, and your first option is pivot table, so let's select pivot table. A dialog box will pop up a create pivot table dialog box and it's just going to ask you um, to choose the data that you want to analyze so here it's already got selected select a table or range so this would be if you'd named your table I haven't named my table it's just called table one but I can also see that the little dotted outline is around the outside of my data and normally Excel will default to picking up whatever data it is that you have on your page so um, I've got my table range selected that's fine 
and then I need to choose where I want my pivot table to be placed. And you'll always have two options. You can put it on a new worksheet, which is normally my preference. I like to have my pivot table separate to my raw data. Or if you want to, you can choose to put it on the existing worksheet. So it will put it in on the same place as this data. So I'm going to select new worksheet and I'm going to click on OK. And there we go. So we have a new worksheet opened up at the bottom. I have my little pivot table builder, which currently is empty. And then again, over on the right hand side, this is where we now have our pivot tables, uh, pivot table fields. So again, it's picked up those column headings, department, quarter, and sales. So what I can now do is start building my pivot table. And if you remember back to our first example, we did that by just moving, dragging and dropping these fields into the various different areas down below. And again, it really depends what kind of information you're looking to extract from here. Now, for this um, example, I am going to drag department to columns. And you'll see as I drop them in there, it starts to build up. So you can now see I've got my column headings are my departments. I'm going to drag quarter down to rows. And you'll see that populate now with one, two, three, and four for each quarter. And all I'm missing now are my figures. So I want my sales figures in my values area. So I'm going to drag and drop that down to values like so. And I have now populated my pivot table. Really, really simple to create pivot tables. That's basically how you create one in its, in its simplest form. Obviously, we're using data that only has three columns. You might be um, dealing with very, very large data sets, which might have 100 columns. You know, This is when pivot tables really come into their own, when you're dealing with large amounts of data, and you can really start to drill down into various different aspects. But hopefully, that kind of gives you that foundation and shows you how you can very easily create pivot tables from raw data. Now, as I said, probably um, the hardest thing related to pivot tables is really kind of arranging those fields in a way that's going to extract the data that you're looking for. So there is a new function in Excel, which was new for 2013, I believe, called Recommended Pivot Tables. And this will help you in that area. So I'm just going to close down this worksheet and jump across to Recommended. So again, we have our same data. It, it just looks slightly different because we've applied a different uh, table style to it when we formatted it as a table. I'm going to click in my data, and I'm going to go back to the Insert ribbon. And again, in that Tables group, we clicked Pivot Table previously. But if you look next to it, we have an icon that says Recommended Pivot Tables. So let's click that. So what Excel now does is it, it looks at your data and then it suggests some pivot tables that you might want to use. So it means that you don't have to decide where you're going to drag and drop those fields to. Now, you'll look through some of these and you'll think, no, I definitely don't want to use those. For example, this first one here is doing a count of sales by department. And it's just telling me that there's, there's four in each of these. I don't really want that. What about this one? Sum of quarter by department? No, not really what I'm looking for. I'm going to scroll down and let's look at that one. So sum of sales by quarter and department. Right, that's what I want. I'm going to select it and click OK. And it builds that pivot table for me. It puts all of my column headings. Uh, in exactly where they should be. So recommended pivot tables is a good thing to refer to. Again, particularly if you've got a lot of data, a lot of column headings, and you're really kind of a little bit confused as to which ones or how to get out that data, recommended pivot tables is a good option because it will suggest um, some things which you might find really useful. So remember that that option's there. As I said, that is a reasonably new option that Microsoft have introduced, which is uh, quite useful. All right, I'm just going to close that one down. As I said, there is a lot of switching around between uh, worksheets today. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit now about pivoting pivot tables, which is really the whole point of a pivot table, is our ability to pivot that data around or move that data around in a dynamic fashion. So let's take a look at this example. Again, what we're looking at here, we are looking at customer information. So we're looking at the number of customers for the years 2012 and 2013 for four different quarters. So one, two, three, 
three and four up here. And again, we've got our pivot table fields, and you can see that uh, three of them are in use currently. So I've got year, and you can see that year is in the rows area. We've got quarter, which is currently in columns, and we have our customer data um, in our values down here. I don't currently have region selected at all. So as I said, you can pivot them very easy just by dragging and dropping things around. So I'm going to drag the uh, regions column, which we don't currently have selected. I'm going to drag that to the columns area just to see how that displays. So now I'm seeing my data in a completely different way. It's now divided down by regions, so I can see east, north, south, west per quarter as well. Okay, So that might be how you want to display your data, or it might not be. I'm going to drag region down to rows and have a look at what that looks like. So that might be a little bit easier to read. We've got our regions now running down, um, running across in our rows, and we have our quarters in our columns. Um, and we've got grand totals, so on and so forth. So hopefully you can sort of see how you can drag those fields around. Alternatively, if I wanted to, I could drag region up to that filters area and drop it, which now gives me my data, but I can now filter using region. So if I just want to see all of the data for north, I can select north from that filter, and there I go. I can see the customer figures for all the quarters for 2012 and 2013. So moving those around, pivoting that data is how you're going to get the most out of your pivot tables. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Lovely. Again, I'm just going to close that one down and we're going to jump across and take a look at some configuring options for our pivot tables. And it's all the same data that we're using just to keep things consistent. So again, I'm clicking in my pivot table and I've got my data displayed as so. So in our rows, we've got year and region, we've got quarter in columns and we've got our values, our sum of customers in our values area. Now, Excel provides a number of tools that will um, allow you to manipulate your pivot tables. So things like field pane and the expect, uh, sorry, <laughs> expand and contract uh, buttons. So, for example, in this pivot table, you can see here where it says 2012 and 2013. Next to those, we have this little button, which I can click to contract or click the plus to expand. So if you're really just kind of focused on one particular area of your pivot table, it's sometimes quite nice to collapse up the other areas of your pivot table. Now, these controls, when I click in my pivot table area, if you look up at your ribbons, you will see that you have the pivot table tools contextual ribbon available to you. Now, I'm hoping that you all know what I mean by contextual ribbons. They're those ribbons that only appear when we need them. And if you've been using any version of Office from 2010 onwards, you're probably fairly familiar with that concept. So, you know, if you're formatting a picture in Word, you don't get the format picture ribbon until you clicked on that picture. It's the same thing with pivot tables in Excel. So if I click outside of my pivot table, those ribbons disappear. As soon as I click inside, those ribbons come back. And you can see here, we have two ribbons for pivot tables, the Analyze ribbon and the Design ribbon. So you can probably work out the difference between each. I'm clicked on Design, and that's where we're going to find all of those tools which are going to allow us to, to format our pivot table. And we're going to look at that a little bit later on in the session. And the Analyze ribbon is where we can really start to do some things with our data. So this one's a little bit more technical, the other one's a little bit more uh, design orientated. Now, once we're clicked in here, um, if we're on the Analyze ribbon, if you look all the way across to the end in the Show group, you'll see we have three buttons highlighted, Field List, Plus Minus Buttons, and Field Headers. So, for example, if I was to close down this pivot tables field, and sorry, my webinar thing's in the way, but if I was to accidentally close down the pivot tables field like that, I could very easily get that back just by clicking on the Analyze ribbon and clicking on Field List, and that will bring that pivot table field back. We, I used to get this t uh, question all the time where people would close down the window and then not know how to get that window back. So it's very simple. It's just on that Analyze ribbon. You can also control your plus and minus buttons. So again, just referring back to where we have 2012 and 2013, we can get rid of those just by clicking the plus 
on the minus buttons just to show or hide those. And also field headers, we can get rid of those. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to get rid of those. They're quite useful sometimes. Um, so you can manage and control your pivot tables using those controls in that show area on the analyze ribbon. Okay, I think I'm going to stop just there and just see if there's any uh, questions at this stage. Hi Deb, yes, we've got a few questions. Um, the first one is uh, from Grant, and that is, I know you've touched on this um, during the webinar a bit already, but are there any advantages of having the raw data in a table format, or can it just be in a, a, a data block? Okay, and great question Grant, uh, thank you. Um, you can have your data in, in just a data block. Um, it's, Microsoft recommend that you put it in a table. There are some advantages with table, as I, I briefly mentioned earlier, and we are going to go into this a little bit more, is you can do things like name your table, so essentially name that range of cells, and that can be useful. Um, if you then start to do things like use your pivot tables in formulas, sometimes it's easier to use table names, things like that. And it's also, as I said, useful for um, adding data into your pivot table. So if you have it, um, it's very easy to add another row and then that pivot table will refresh and update with that data. But <laughs> essentially, you don't have to have it in, uh, in that format. As long as it's consistent data, no blank rows, no blank or no gaps essentially, um, and that data is the same all the way through. And what I mean by that is um, maybe not having a mixture of data types in one column. So you couldn't have, for example, text and numbers in one column, the pivot table wouldn't work. So as long as your data is consistent and in that kind of rectangular format, then no. If it's a list, you'll be absolutely fine. But it is recommended um, that you put your, your, your data into a table. Does that answer your question, Grant? I think that's great, Deb. Um, okay. The next question is from Gary, and he asks, when you move from one financial period to another, how do you remove the old dates from the filter when they no longer exist in the data behind the pivot? Wow. <laughs> That's a fairly complex question. So let me try and uh, uh, get out of that what you're, what, what you're trying to say. So you've created a pivot table and you, have, um, you no longer need the data and you want to remove it from the pivot table. Is that what you're saying? Um, I, I mean, I don't know if I'm thinking of this too simplistically, but could you not just untick untick these fields, is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about the actual da raw data being removed? If you're talking about raw data, so you don't need that anymore, um, it would, you could remove it from your original data source and then recreate the pivot table. Um, I don't know if that's answered your question. I might have to, has that answered your question? Okay, if that hasn't answered your question, Gary, um, let me know or let us know in the chat window and I will I'll come back to you after the session. Um, I wouldn't mind going into that a little bit more with you. Okay, and um, the final one for this uh, little question break, um, and uh, yeah, it's from Simon. He says, when formatting a table, do you need to highlight the data first? Um, I imagine the answer is yes, because that, that would be the only way to um, obviously select that data that you wanted to um, to, to involve in the pivot table. Um, you actually, hi Simon, um, you actually don't have to select the data as in, you don't have to kind of drag your mouse over and select that data. Um, if you click somewhere in that data and then go to format table and select a table format, Excel will, will normally pick up that you, know, you want to highlight all of the data kind of where you're clicked, so it will normally pick up all of that data. Um, another quick way, if you're ever, you know, tired of dragging your mouse all the way down if you've got lots of rows, if you just click anywhere in your data and do control A, that will highlight all of your, that data as well. So if you are somebody who prefers to highlight before formatting, you can do that and the control A, once you're clicked in your data, is a quick way of doing it. And you must be clicked in your data. If you're clicked on your spreadsheet and you select Control A, it's going to select the entire spreadsheet. But if you're in a table and you select Control A, it's just going to highlight all of that data. But the answer to your question is no. You don't have to highlight all of the data. Uh, format as table will pick up the data. 
I stand corrected there, Deb. Okay, and that's all we'll take at this moment. So um, uh, all the other questions we've received, um, we'll, we'll try and get through them at the end of the session. Lovely, thank you. All right, guys, let's carry on. So I'm just going to close down this spreadsheet again. And let's move on to taking a look at connecting to an external data source. So what I mean by that is the, the examples that we've been using so far, our data source or our raw data has been in the same Excel spreadsheet and we've just created a pivot table based on that raw data. Now, um, you know, we all live in the real world, it's not always that perfect, so you know, you might have a data source that's stored somewhere else, be that either in a, another Excel spreadsheet or maybe it's um, some kind of database file, some kind of access database, uh, even a table in Word you could possibly create an Excel, um, uh, sorry, a pivot table from. So if you have an external data source, so something that's not currently in the spreadsheet that you're working in, how do you pull in that information and create a pivot table. So let's take a look at that. And for that, I'm going to use, I think I need to go to chapter two. No, maybe not. Just bear with me, guys. Ah, connect, that's what I'm looking for. All right, so this isn't a very exciting pivot table, is it? There's absolutely nothing on this page, and that's because I have no data in this spreadsheet. I am pulling in external data. So let's take a look at how we do that. Really, really simple. We go to the Insert ribbon, and again, we go to Pivot Table. This is pretty much how we created a pivot table last time, but if you remember, when we created, created the pivot table previously, we selected a table or range, because our data was already here and we picked up our data which we were going to use. Now in this example we don't have any data in this spreadsheet, we want to connect to an external data source so hopefully you can see which option we're going to select there. So use an external data source. What I then need to do is click choose connection and that basically just means choose your file. It's a, a bit of a lengthy word. You could connect to databases, which is why I think they've called it connection, but I'm just going to go to browse for more at the bottom, which will take me to my local drives where I'm going to have my data source stored. And I've got mine. Again, just bear with me. And mine is in here, and it's called external data. So it's just another Excel spreadsheet, but it's, it's an external spreadsheet. So I'm going to click on open. And what it will do is once it's picked up your data source, it has a little look. So it's looked and it's found external data is the file name. And it will basically show you all the different sheets that it finds data on. So I've only got one sheet in this um, spreadsheet. So it's just saying, do you want to use this data on this spreadsheet? So I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to make sure that I've got a first row of data contains column headings selected. So remember, pivot tables use the column headings as those fields. So really important that you uh, make sure that the first row of data contains your column headings. So I'm going to click on OK. I can then specify where I want this pivot table report to be placed. Now, again, previously we did it on a new worksheet because we had our raw data on our current worksheet. In this example, we've got nothing on our current worksheet, so it's absolutely fine for us to place our pivot table just there. So I'm going to leave it on existing worksheet, and I'm going to click on OK. And there we have it. So it's brought in my fields, which were were contained in that external Excel spreadsheet, day, department, month, sales, so on and so forth. So I can just go through and build my pivot table report by dragging and dropping. I'm just going to do it just to keep it consistent, fairly similar to how we've done it before. Okay, so very, very simple just to connect to external data sources. Now, on that vein, we're going to do something fairly similar, and this is sort of something which might be fairly common as well, and that is combining data sources into one pivot table. So what I mean by that, and I'll pull up the example so that it um, makes more sense to you. And for this one, we're going to use consolidating. All right. 
Now, in this spreadsheet, I have three worksheets. So if you look down to the bottom, you can see the one I'm currently clicked on. It's called Support Calls. So we have some support call information for the years 2010 to 2013 for the North, South, East, and West regions. I then have on the next tab, Order Calls, for the same kind of time period, so 2010 to 2013 for the same regions, and then Returned Calls for the same regions and the same time period. So my data is consistent, it's just displaying different figures um, across different worksheets. So if you have worksheets on separate, sorry, if you have data on separate worksheets, you can combine the whole lot into one pivot table as long as that data is consistent. So I know I have exactly the same column headings across all of these worksheets and exactly the same row headings as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consolidate all of this data and build one nice pivot table off of the whole lot. And this is very simple to do as well. Now, the tricky part with this is that in order to do, to consolidate data from multiple worksheets is that you need to use the pivot tables wizard. Now, um, in Microsoft's Wisdom, a couple of years ago, they removed the pivot tables wizard from the, the ribbon, which means it's now kind of like one of those hidden features that you have to know a special combination of keys in order to access. So I'm going to just quickly type up on the screen um, what those keys are, just so you can write them down. So um, you need to press Alt, D, and then P, and you need to press those independently. So don't hold them all down together. You would press Alt, then D, then P, and magically it will take you into the pivot tables wizard. Who's going to know that if someone didn't tell you? <laughs> so hopefully you've got that written down because I'm going to do that in a moment. I just want to take that out. So let's do that. So to get into the pivot tables wizard, I'm going to press uh, Alt. I'm then going to press D. I'm then going to press P. And look at that, like magic pivot table, and pivot chart wizard. So let's walk our way through the wizard. And, and wizards are always really, really useful. They really do kind of like take you by the hand and guide you through a process. And I've always really, really liked having wizards, particularly if I'm, I'm doing something which I'm not particularly sure of. I find them really useful that rather than just me kind of like fiddling around and trying to work my way through. So this is saying, where is the data that you want to analyze? And we've got three options there. Now, because we're doing a consolidation, we're bringing together three lots of data sets into one. So I'm going to select multiple consolidation ranges. It says, what kind of report do you want to create? So I have the choice of a pivot table or a pivot chart report. So we're concentrating on pivot tables at the moment. So I'm going to leave that selected and click on the next button. Step two says you can create a pivot table report that uses ranges for one or more worksheets, which is exactly what we're doing, and that has no page fields or up to four page fields. Now, you might be wondering, what's a page field? It's basically a filter. So if you want um, Excel to create a filter based on one of your column headings or um, row headings, then you could do that. Now, don't worry too much about this at this stage. I'm just going to select, I will create the page fields, and I would recommend that that's what you select as well. I don't want them to create them for me automatically. And I'm going to click Next. And this is where we can start adding in the data that we want to consolidate. So you'll get this um, box open up, and it says, where are the worksheet ranges that you want to consolidate? And it's asking me to enter in a range. So I need to go in and select the data that I want to use. So I'm going to click on this little red arrow. And for those of you that are used to using Excel, you'll know that clicking on anything like this always just minimizes up that window and allows you to see underneath. And you can then go in and select. And I'm on that first worksheet to select that data range like so. And then just click on it again to expand. So I'm now saying my first set of data is on the support calls worksheet. And I've given it rows and columns. And I'm going to click Add to add that in. I'm going to do exactly the same process across each of those worksheets, each time adding that data in. So I'm going to just minimize that up a little bit. I'm going to click on Order Calls. And I'm going to highlight my data range and do exactly the same thing. I'm then going to click Add. So you can see we're building up our database. And finally, I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the last one, Return Calls. I'm going to highlight my data, and I'm going to click 
add. So I now have all of my data sets in one. I'm not going to select anything for page fields. That's something which I would also recommend. Just select zero and then click next. And as usual, it's going to ask us, do we want to place our new, fantastic, consolidated pivot table on the existing worksheet or on a new worksheet? And I like to keep mine completely separate, so I'm going to put it on a new worksheet like so, and then click Finish. And what should happen, yes, is now all of our data is consolidated into one table. So that's a really nice way of just pulling through, but just remember that your, your data has to be consistent across those worksheets. You can't have lots of different kind of things going on. Um, it will start to get a little bit crazy. So as long as you've got consistent data, very easy to consolidate those across. So hopefully that's made that a little bit easier to understand. All right. Let's close that one down and move on to our next topic. I'm going to use the managing worksheet for this. This is really some, some basic kind of admin stuff which you might want to do with your pivot table. So managing your worksheets essentially. So I did mention at the beginning that um, sometimes it's quite nice to name your tables. I'm someone who, whenever I create a table in Excel, regardless of whether it's a pivot table, I will always name my table. I'm just in the habit of doing it now. It's really simple, it's really quick. And I do find that it's actually quite useful for things like navigating. I can jump around my worksheet based on what I've named that range of data. Um, it's also useful for formulas. Instead of highlighting or putting in cell references, I can just give the table name. So I always like to get into the habit and would always recommend that people get get into the habit of when you create a table, give it a little name. Um, it also makes it um, nice and easy for you to kind of know what's in that table. So by default, uh, this table, if I go to the Analyze ribbon up here, is just called Pivot Table 3. So if I've got a lot of tables, that doesn't mean much to me. So I like to give my table a little bit more of a meaningful name. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to rename my table to something else by changing this Pivot Table name field up here. Now, in order to um, name my table, I do have to select um, the, the data. So I have to select my, my cell range, essentially. So there are a couple of ways that you can do that. I mentioned one earlier. As long as you're clicked in your table, if you press Control-A, that will highlight the entire table. Okay. Again, if I was clicked outside the table and did Control A, it's going to highlight the entire spreadsheet. So as long as you're clicked inside, that will highlight it. However, if you prefer to use um, the, uh, the ribbons, there is a select option as well. So again, on the Analyze uh, ribbon, in the Actions group, you have a select option just here, and you can select Entire Pivot Table, and that will also do that just there. And I'm going to give my pivot table a name just by typing it into this area up here. So what is this displaying? So this is displaying my departments by quarter. So I'm going to call it Debt Quarter. And one important thing to remember is when you're naming your tables is not to have any spaces in those names. So you can see I've just got Debt Quarter, all one word, and make sure that you do press Enter just to set that. Okay, so it makes it nice and easy. Does that make sense to everyone? I'm hoping that makes sense to everybody so far. Other things that you can do or other admin tasks is moving your pivot tables around. So you might want to copy and paste your pivot table across to other worksheets. So again, all you would need to do is highlight your data. And again, you could do that using Control A or Analyze and Select. Control C to copy or edit, um, copy, whichever you prefer. And I'm going to move to another worksheet, and I'm just going to do Control V to paste or edit paste, whichever you prefer in that way. And you'll see it brings across all of that data like so. Okay, so very, very simple to copy and paste those across. And again, when it comes to things like deleting your pivot table, as long as you've got the pivot table highlighted, if we go to the Analyze ribbon again, um, well, actually, we don't even need to go to the ribbon, sorry, um, you can just delete on your keyboard just to delete that out. Uh, the option I was thinking of was this clear option just here and that's actually quite useful if you just want to clear out all of the data. So if I do clear all, you see it essentially resets that pivot table back to uh, before I started adding in any fields. So my fields are still here 
but it's just cleared out or reset that pivot table back to how it was before. So that's sometimes quite a nice option as well. Lovely. So just a couple of little tips there for managing your pivot tables. All right, let's jump across to looking at totals, subtotals, grand totals, all of those kinds of things in our pivot tables. Again, this is a really, really simple feature. So you can um, see here our pivot table data. It's the data that we've been using all session. We have at the top here, so where it says 2012, if you cast your eye across, and we've got our different regions, east, north, south, and west, you'll see underneath I currently have subtotals for all of those regions. So this, is, this 2,181 is um, the sum total of all of the quarters added up, and I have it as a subtotal at the top there. And with grand total, this is just the overall total of all of these different regions as well. So it's quite nice to have grand total and subtotals on your data sometimes. Now, looking at this data, this is the default. If you apply subtotals to your pivot table, this is how it will look by default. And I don't know about you, but I actually don't like the way that that's displayed. If I'm looking for a subtotal in general, I will read down and I like to have my subtotal at the bottom. I don't like to have my subtotal at the top. I find that a little bit confusing. So you can modify that to display those subtotals um, where you want those to display. So again, make sure you're clicked in your pivot table and go to your design ribbon. And you'll see in the first group, which is marked as layout, you, you have two options for subtotals and grand totals. So let's look at subtotals first of all. And you've got various options. You can turn subtotals off if you're not interested in that. You can show at the bottom of the group or show at the top. So the default is to show at the top, but I'm just going to switch that to show at the bottom. And that now makes a little bit more sense to, sense to me, at least. I can read down my numbers and then I have my subtotals listed just here. The same thing for grand total. So again, in this layout ribbon or layout group on the design ribbon, you can choose if you want to turn it off for rows and columns, so it will turn it off for both, uh, on for rows and columns, or you can have it on for rows only or columns only, it's entirely up to you. So if I was to turn it off for both of those, my grand total is going to disappear. Okay, so you have those controls, again, very easy just to toggle those off and on. Now, some other features that you might um, like to apply to your pivot table data um, is summarizing uh, the values in your pivot table. So you'll see here, uh, the values area is the main body of your pivot table, so your main data. So we're talking about this kind of data just here. And this is, if we look over at our pivot tables field, you'll always find that data will be in the values area. And currently it says uh, sum of customers. And that is the default, it will always be a sum of customers. However, it might be that I want to find out the average or find out the maximum number in here. So you can change this, okay? And again, if you click in your data, right click your mouse and you'll see you have a summarize values by and you'll see that sum is currently ticked. Now, if I want to see the averages, you can very easily change that to average. Now, what will happen here is that this data here doesn't change because, oh, sorry, my mouse is getting a bit crazy. <laughs> this data here doesn't change because this is your raw data essentially, but you, what you'll see has changed is the subtotals. It's now giving me an average of that data just there. Okay, so that's what it's changing. If I right click again and summarize values by, I might want to find out what the maximum value is in that particular column. So if I select max, again, this data doesn't change, but it's now telling me that 729 is the largest number in this column, 651, 622, so on and so forth. So you can very simply toggle and summarize your values by different things. And there's all obviously more options in there if you want to start getting a little bit more complex. So remember that you have those little tools as well. And another one, let me just control Z and get our data back to how it was. There we go. 
Another thing, again, in the same right-click menu that can sometimes be useful is showing your values as a percentage. So it might be, and I'll just come out there for a moment, that you want to show this data as a percentage of the grand total. So my grand total is 3,467, and I might want to know what percentage is allocated to 2012 and what percentage is allocated to 2013, how that is split, how those uh, customers, customer data is split between those in a percentage format. So we can do that as well very simply by right-clicking, show values as, and then you have a number of different options which you could use in here, and I'll leave you to play around with some of those, but I'm going to do percentage of grand total, and there you go. So that's showing me those numbers just there. Okay, so I can see that the, the total for 2012 takes up 51.27% of the grand total, and the total for 2013 is 48.73%. So there's all different kinds of combinations you can do with those percentages, so it might be worth having a little play around with those as well. Fabulous. All right. Let's close down that worksheet. Actually, before I close that down, I might just use this worksheet for the next one as well. Yeah, let's undo, let's control Z out of here to get our data back. Okay, we're going to stay on this worksheet for the moment because this, this is just a very quick thing I wanted to show you. Um, pretty much in most of our examples, we've had just one set of data in this values area. So um, don't think that you can only have or only display um, one set of data in this values area. So I've got my customers in here, but I could add um, region to values as well if I wanted to, to display it slightly different. So um, you can add things to that values column if you want to. It's not just a matter of having one thing in there, because I know that through all of these examples, we only have kind of one thing in there. You can add more in there as well is the point I'm trying to make. Fabulous. Um, again, I'm going to stay on this worksheet just for this um, little section as well, and it's really just to talk about grouping, um, grouping data in your pivot, fi uh, pivot table. So we talked a little bit about these little um, expand and contract buttons next to our 2012 and 2013 options. Um, you can essentially kind of group your own data as well. So for example, if um, in 2012 I'm only really all that interested in seeing information for weeks three and four, I might want to highlight rows, um, sorry, rows six and seven, or quarters one and two, and make that a little collapsible and expandable group. So I can collapse it up if I want to and only see the data for three and four. So you can create your own little collapsible and expandable areas. So you want to highlight your two rows. And we're going to go across to the data ribbon for this. And this is where you'll find in the very last group, you have a group option. And I'm going to say group. And what you'll see that does is now in the margin, essentially, we now have a little minus sign, so I can collapse that up like so, and it will just become an unobtrusive cross, which I can then expand if I want to. So, you know, if you've got kind of a lot of data somewhere which you don't really need to pay attention to, you could put those on just so that you always see the data that's relevant for you and whatever it is that you're doing at that time. So that's another little option that you can use as well. Um, a couple of other things to mention, and these, you know, if you're an Excel user, you'll be used to using these options, so I'm not going to spend too long talking about them. Sorting, um, again, you can right-click on your data, and you have a sort option in here, so I can choose to sort my uh, characters from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. Now, bearing in mind, Excel does recognize if that cell that you're currently clicked on is text-based or if it's numerical values, so it will sort it alphabetically if it's text um, um, or largest to smallest if it's numbers. So you do have your sort options in there. Um, and if you want more advanced sort options, you could, if you go across to your pivot tables field, if you hover over any of your fields and click the little drop down arrow on the end, you have a lot more kind of sort options in there and also filtering options as well. So that's kind of the two areas where your values are or your data is kept for sorting and filtering. 
Lovely. All right. So just the very last bit. I know I've kept you a little bit longer than I was hoping. Once we get going, I told you, once we get going on pivot tables, we could probably be here all day. So I'm just trying to give you a very quick summary. Just want to talk about, before I leave you, just some, some formatting things regarding um, pivot tables um, and also adding information or adding data like uh, slices, which I think are quite useful as well. So it sounds quite violent, doesn't it, slices, but they're really, really useful little options. So let's open up the slices page. Okay, again, we're getting used to our data now. It hasn't changed throughout the whole session. We're using exactly the same data. And Microsoft, a couple of years ago, again, I think this was with the release of 2013. Um, so if you have Excel 2013 or above, you will have this option. Um, a feature was included called slices. And again, it works really well with pivot tables. It's just a really visual way of creating they call it a dashboard. It's essentially a way that you can add uh, little filters in. They're very visual. They're very easy for other people to use. So if you send somebody a spreadsheet with a lot of data in it, if it's got slices in it, they can easily um, use the slicer to kind of slice up that data, which I guess is why it's, um, it's called a slicer. So let's have a quick look at how those work. Again, click in your pivot table. And you'll find slices on a couple of different ribbons in here. Um, I'm just going to insert mine from the Analyze ribbon on the pivot, table, the pivot Tables toolbar, or ribbon, I should say. Toolbar is a little bit old school now. Um, and I'm going to click on Insert Slicer in the Filters group. What that will do is it will allow you to select um, a slicer to insert, how you want to slice up that data. So maybe I'm particularly interested in seeing things um, all related to the region. So maybe I'm a regional manager and um, I oversee all the different regions. I want to be able to slice up that data uh, and display each region's data independently. So I'm going to select region and it's going to give me a little region slicer, which I can then move across here. And you can resize it by dragging it in. You can format it. So now I'm clicked on my slicer. Let's look up. We've got our slicer tools, contextual ribbon, and we have some formatting options. So you can really kind of change that to, you know, whatever color scheme you've got going on. And I've got blue, so I can change it like so. And I can then use this. So if I just want to see data relating to the north, I can click on north. Very, very simple. Makes it very easy if you add slices in. And you can have more than one slicer in your document. So if I wanted to add another one, I'd go back to Analyze, Insert Slicer, and maybe I want to do it by year and click OK. And I could have another slicer in there, which I could resize. Oops, resize that a bit too much. And then I could move that underneath. I could, so that it looks different, I could format it in a slightly different color, and I could use like so by selecting my options. So slices are a really good way of, of adding a little pizzazz to your um, data, I should say, and making them really easy for people to use. And finally, because I know we're probably all dying to go for lunch, those of us that are, are in the, the time zone where lunch occurs <laughs> at the moment, but I will just finish off by showing you um, some conditional formatting in your pivot tables as well. So let's close that one down. And open up this one just here. All right. So again, this isn't a, a functionality that's specific to pivot tables. If you're used to using Excel, then you might already be aware of the conditional formatting options. But just so you can see kind of how you can use them in here as well. On the home ribbon, um, in the styles group, you have conditional formatting. And this is where you can really kind of start to, um, it's a visual way of pulling information out of your, your data. So for example, if I very quickly wanted to highlight in here, so I'm going to highlight this data, I might want to show um, all of the data that is greater than a specific number. So um, let's say greater than a thousand. And I'm going to say to Excel, any cell that contains data that's higher than a thousand or greater than a thousand, fill it with a light red fill with dark red text. So I could do things like that. I could do things like highlight the top 10% 
of data in my in the data range that I've got selected, bottom 10, so on and so forth. I can use things like data bars as well. So let's I apologize if you can hear that. That's a fire bell. <laughs> I'm just going to go back to conditional formatting. I can add things like uh, data bars. So if, uh, again, it's just a visual way of representing your, your pivot chart data. So I can choose different colors that I could use. I could choose to use a color scale. So again, just a visual way of representing. I can see immediately that what the highest number is in there is the darkest red color. Or you could go through and use icon sets to, to represent your data. And just remember, you might have to do a little bit of resizing um, just to make sure that that all fits in nicely. So just remember that you, you can combine some of the tools that you're familiar with in Excel with your pivot tables as well. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. I have run much longer than I was expecting, but that is the first time that we've run that little mini session. So I'm really hoping that you found that useful. Um, as I said, it's we could go on forever on pivot tables, three, four hours or so, um, going into all the different details and advanced features. But I want just to pitch this to a fairly basic level, um, and hopefully that's kind of demystified pivot tables a little bit for you and shown you that they're not actually that difficult. As long as you have data, that data is fairly clean. You can can um, use that pivot table to extract um, what it is that you need. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for attending today, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Oh, sorry, I forgot questions. <laughs> Let's finish with some questions. I got carried away there a little bit. <laughs> Hi again, Deb. Uh, yeah, we've had quite a few questions, so we'll try and rattle through these. Um, the first one comes from Nick. Um, and he says, what happens if there are blanks in my pivot, uh, in my data? If I have a yeah. table in which there may or may, uh, there may or may not be a date entered depending if the action took place, for example. Yeah, so if, if there's blanks in your data, um, and let me just go back to one of the earlier spreadsheets that isn't so formatted. The pivot table will basically cut off where the data ends. So let's uh, let's go to back to the first one that we did. So we go to sheet one. So for example, if I had in here um, a row like that in my data, when I go to create my pivot table, so if I click in here, it's basically just going to create a pivot table based on this data there, because there's a blank row. It splits up that data essentially. Um, and if I was to click in there, it's going to do the pivot table just on the on the data below. So there has to be no gaps, no blanks in your data. If you've got like a blank cell, so you know if um, I don't know if you've got sales data and there was no sales, you know, put a zero in there or something along those lines. It, it just gets confused. It doesn't work quite as well if it's got blanks in there. Okay, great. Uh, our next question, in fact, I'm going to group two questions together here, actually. Um, we're going back to Gary, who came in uh, to, who uh, asked a question earlier about removing old data from the raw data. Um, Gary's come back to us and said, um, to clarify, when removing old data from the raw data, it still appears to exist when you filter data within the pivot table. Um, he, his example is, if you remove raw data relating to 2015, it often still appears on the pivot table within a filter. So if you wanted to filter the pivot table by date 2015, the dates still appear even though they're no longer part. Um, his question continued is then do you have to recreate the entire pivot table or is there a more simple way to remove it and I think this also answers Rob's question or this will answer Rob's question who said is it just that easy to delete uh, the source info yeah yes okay I understand what you mean now I was a little bit confused before but uh, <laughs> yes so that's a really good point that you've brought up if you make changes to the raw data so for example if you remove data which is what you're saying if you remove the 2015 data it will still appear in the pivot table the pivot table doesn't update itself so it will still stay there okay until you either do one of two things you refresh that pivot table and hopefully you can see on the screen we've got a refresh option just there to refresh the data or you need to recreate the pivot table those are your two options that you have but as you've rightly noticed no it doesn't automatically refresh or update 
Okay, great. The next uh, question is from Rosemary. Uh, Rosemary asks, the grand total on pivot tables can be meaningless as each quarter's customers could be the same customers. Does the grand total have to be shown? Absolutely not, Rosemary. Um, it's, it's really up to you. It's just really showing you that, that option is there. So you can see here on this spreadsheet, I've got uh, my grand total showing, um, but if I don't want them there, I can very easily turn that off by just going to my design ribbon and turning off grand totals for rows and columns. So that's absolutely fine. The only thing I would say against that is um, if, and you may not be doing this, but if you're using a grand total, maybe on another spreadsheet or you're using it in a formula, so maybe you're using that cell to link through to another formula, if you turn off grand totals then that can mess up your formula, so because the data is no longer in that cell if you turn off grand totals, so that will then, if you're then referring to the grand total, it's not going to follow through, but no, there is absolutely, you do not have to have it on there, it's just a feature that's available if you find it useful. Okay, great. Um, just a couple more. Uh, I'm going to group lots of questions together here if I can just to uh, pace through them. Um, next one is from Marios. Uh, Marios says, can I copy slash paste the pivot table to another workbook and sort of coupled with that, can I create a pivot table from data in different workbooks? Um, yes, you can. So let's let's do it, shall we? Um, we've got our pivot table just here. So again, just going to click in there, oops, and I'm going to click, uh, I'm going to do control A, you could do analyze and select pivot table, I'm then going to do control C, and let's just do a brand new workbook, and I believe, that I don't see there being too much of a problem, but let's have a look, yep, there you go, so that's just pasted into another workbook and it's brought across those um, those details just there. So yeah, that's um, absolutely not a problem at all. Um, and yes, using data in different workbooks, yes, you could do that. Um, and you would do it in exactly the same way that we went through with the consolidate multiple sources. If you remember, um, we went into, let me just do a brand new worksheet. The example I showed you was of three worksheets in the same workbook, three worksheets, and we consolidated that data into one. You could have a, a separate workbook open and do it in exactly the same way because that is just referring to, it will just refer to the sheet that you have, um, or sorry, the, the other workbook and the sheet that you select. So you absolutely can do that, consolidate them all together even if they are across different workbooks. Okay, and our, our last question, um, uh, uh, it's a bit of a series of questions here, it's from Wei Ling, um, she wrote in earlier uh, kind of um, saying, saying if the um, Excel 2013 seems quite uh, more advanced than the 2010 version, yeah, yeah. Um, she then goes on to ask um, the connecting to external data function that you can use, um, was that available in 2010? Um, I, I, I think it may have been, but I'm, I'm not 100% on that, so I'll, I'll, ask, I'll put that one to you first, Deb. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> um, I, yes, I'm, I'm just trying to remember back to 2010 because it has been a little while since I've used it, but I do believe that that was available in 20. Yes, I'm pretty, uh, yeah, I'm almost 100% certain that it, it was available in 2010, the Connect. It might be in a slightly different area. Again, I'm struggling to remember back to 2010. I don't think 2010 layout was that different to what I'm using here. I'm on 2016, but it hasn't changed too drastically between 2010 and 2016. Um, but yes, um, I do believe that it was available in 2010. I would suggest that you click in your pivot table and see if you can find that option. It will be, you will get a ribbon for pivot table tools and if it is available, it will be under the, the analyze ribbon. Okay, and off the back of that, uh, she also asks, um, can I use the consolidating functions to pull each quarter sales into year-ended financial statements? So quite specific. Year-ended financial statements. Um, the consol I mean, the consolidate data tool that I've just shown you is basically just taking the same kind of data that's on three worksheets and and kind of merging it together. Um, I'm not quite sure I'm understanding what your question is about merging it onto financial statements. I might have to um, 
if you stay on the line, if you can maybe type into the chat window kind of a little bit more about what you mean by that, and then I can email you after the session uh, and give you an answer. I'm not 100% sure um, what you mean by that question, so just need a little bit more detail. Okay, great. Um, Web, uh, Deb, obviously, thank you for that. Just, um, just to let everyone else know, there aren't any um, slides as such for this webinar, as obviously Deb's been doing most of it in, in sort of little, little workbooks and things like that. But the webinar will be available um, to download via uh, our website, and um, if you, uh, and that's http uh, colon slash slash learn dot filtered dot com slash webinars. You'll also get a link to that in a, a follow up email. So um, yeah, just watch this space. You should get that in the next hour or so. Um, that's all the time we have for questions as well. So apologies if we haven't managed to um, uh, field yours. If you do want to email us at info at webinars team, we will happily obviously get back to you with your um, with the answers to those questions. So um, apologies, but obviously thanks for, for writing in in any case. Um, that is uh, all from this uh, webinar. So thanks to again for, for that. And obviously thanks to everyone for attending. Um, before we, we just go. Um, uh, just a couple of things I'd like to, to cover. Obviously, I've mentioned uh, that you can download it via our, our website. Um, if you're interested in speaking to one of our team about uh, Excel or advanced Excel courses, we also have a, um, uh, or pivot tables potentially, um, uh, do get in touch with us um, either at hello at filter.com or on 020 double seven two nine nine oh four three um i think that's everything from us though so um just to let you know we're taking a short break from from webinars for the next few weeks but do keep an eye on that webinars page um, as soon as we've got more planned um, you'll be able to register for them there but um until next time thanks for joining us and have a wonderful afternoon take care bye muted